Hi guys and girls, how are you? Commander64 here. How would you like to see someone with little to no experience in building things cobbling together some sort of gaming cockpit? Well, I'm about to do just that after this 10 second intro. If you're new to the channel, thanks very much for taking the time out of your day to check out my video. I appreciate it. And if you've been here before, thanks again for coming back. That means a lot too. Comments, likes, views, subscribes, all those kind of things are what keep this channel running and I really do appreciate every single one of them. Thanks guys. The channel's divided into different playlists and you've reached the Elite Dangerous section of the channel. Whether you play the game on a regular basis or you're just thinking about picking it up, I hope that this part of the channel can become part of your regular viewing. This is the first part in the Elite Dangerous section and it's going to be somewhat of an ambitious start to it all. It's going to be a multi-part video. I say a multi-part video because I don't know if it's going to be four parts, six parts or just go on to the end of time. As I alluded to, I'm going to be building something, a cockpit of some sort. Nothing massive, nothing too extravagant, but hopefully something pretty cool and immersive. So let's get to it. Come and have a look at my spaceship. Come on, I've got sweeties. Stop it. So here we are. Welcome to my spaceship. This is Rebecca's star. I named this one after my wife and daughter. My wife's name is Rebecca and the little star is our daughter. Oh. She's a Lacon Type 6 transporter. The spaceship, not my daughter. And I mainly use her for smuggling, again, the, the spaceship, not the little girl. Piracy, trading goods, that kind of Han Solo shenanigans. Let's have a look inside. There we go, we're inside Virtual Cockpit now and sitting in the chair is Virtual Me. And I've tried to make him resemble myself a bit. He kinda does, but he's got a cool eye. I don't have a cool eye. Uh, the other thing you'll notice about Virtual Me is he looks relatively comfortable. He's got a nice reclinable chair and he's got nice arms on his chair. The rest is sticking his throttle. All he needs is a cup of cocoa and he's ready to cruise the Milky Way in luxury. This is actual me. Actual me does have a cup of cocoa on his computer desk. But you'll also notice he has his stick, his throttle, his keyboard, everything known to man. Unlike virtual me, he doesn't really look that comfortable at all. He's all hunched over, he's trying to reach everything. Oh, now look, he's got a bad back. Tremendous acting on my part, I must say. So back to virtual me and again the difference is apparent and the primary goal for this project becomes clear. I need to game in comfort. I need some nice thick arms to rest my stick on. And I ain't talking about the Hulkster's 24 inch pythons brother. I need a space chair spot. Now I'm not going to be meticulously recreating this virtual cockpit. I need something much, much smaller. But I am going to try and take some inspiration from it. This angular slanted kind of design to the chair, for example. I'm going to try and incorporate some of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Photoshop and draw up a few designs and come back when I've got something to show you. Right, so I've been tinkering around with Facebook for a bit and you can see the first thing I decided to do was to measure out the dimensions of the living room and try and work out some sort of reasonable amount of space for my cockpit and by reasonable amount of space I mean the most I can get away with uh, without having to sign divorce papers about this is in inches so about 50 by 37 um, is my approximation that I came up with here's where my seat is going to be and here is where I'm going to build the arms which are going to be about 20 inches long and about 8.5 inches wide and I'm not quite sure how high yet 
the eventual plan will to be have some sort of button box and an old school keyboard and somewhere to put the mouse here's the side view and you can see I have actually incorporated that angular slanted look that the seat had in the lake on and uh, I've incorporated that into the arms then I'm going to have various panels that are going to hold a second side on now back to the top view the way that I'm going to get this closer to the wall is by halving the size of the computer desk the way I'm going to half the size of the computer desk is I'm going to turn these into storage so if I whack some hinges on here um, and this side can be a door swinging door that means that I can put some shelves in and turn this into a storage compartment controllers keyboards mice wires that kind of thing and on the other one if I cut out some windows and put some cool grills in um, so for ventilation then I can store the PC inside um, and then I don't need the, to use the computer desk for the PC the literally the only thing the, P, the desk will be there for is the mouse the keyboard and the button box obviously I'm gonna to have to leave access here and here because we have power buttons and headphone jacks there and we have USB ports and power um, out of here but that's the general design so far and I kind of like it so these are the panels we're using MDF panels now, 18 millimeters thick which is a nice should provide a nice sturdy armrest these are going to double up as storage the first one we're going to put a, a PC inside it so that's going to have vents on each side the second one's just going to be more like a bookcase type thing and install controllers and what have you in there so that one's going to have a, 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 a thinner that's going to have a door which I'm going to use this th thinner bit of MDF this is a um, 12 millimeters thick so it's a bit thinner than the 18 inch uh, 18 inch 18 millimeter stuff I've got over there because um, it's going to be on a hinge and I don't want it to be too heavy I'm thinking if it's too heavy it will just pull the hinges off so I've got a bit thinner stuff here these are the tools I'm going to be using I've got a couple of pen knives I have got a um, plasterboard knife a saw um, another saw this is an easy square let me uh, measure angles uh, obviously I'm going to be hammering a bit a leveler which I can use to try and get things straight and what have you a drill and because MDF makes a lot of dust a gas mask and obviously some gloves so I don't uh, cut myself or get splinters or anything so this seems like a good place to end part one uh, we've got all our tools we've got all our materials and we've got a basic plan about what we want to do so um, in the second part we'll probably be sawing up the pieces and getting them ready for assembly i hope you enjoyed this first part of the series if you did please leave me a like or subscribe or a comment down below to let me know what you liked or what you didn't like about the video and i hope to see you in the next one but for now, this is Commander 64, signing off.